our first speaker for the last session. He works as a bank officer at the Banco Central of Filipinas. As a bank officer, he manages the conduct and preparation of reports on consumer finance and business expectations survey. He also supervises junior statisticians in maintaining economic and statistical indicators and in preparing related reports. He also undertakes um, special assignments related to monetary policy. Before joining BSP, he was a former supervising research specialist at the Philippine Institute for Development Studies. He took his Master of Science in Economics and Econometrics at the University of Manchester in 2014 and his Master of Economics at the University of the Philippines, Diliman, in 2008. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Christian Mina. Um, good afternoon. Um, our paper on inequality uh, talks about um, inequality of opportunities, um, specifically in accessing um, basic services such as water and sanitation, electricity, and education. But given um, today's theme, um, this presentation will um, focus on educational inquiry. Um, so my presentation is structured as follows. So first, I'll be uh, providing you with a brief background and objectives of our study, uh, followed by the description of our methodology. And then I'll present some of our key findings and leave you with some recommendations. Um, for the uh, almost um, uh, two and a half decades, um, the Philippines um, has not made significant progress in um, terms of reducing income inequality, um, as evidenced by the trends in the various um, income inequality measures. So the Gini coefficient, um, which is the one of the most common measures of income inequality, um, has remained um, about the warning level of 0.4 from 1991 to 2015. Um, the income of households that belong to the poorest, 20%, um, has remained um, or has been account, uh, accounting for around 5% of the total income of Filipino households. And um, the income of the richest, 10%, um, has been um, around um, 20 times the income of the uh, poorest 10 percent. So, in other words, the um, gap between the in, uh, rich and the poor Filipinos in terms of income has not narrowed much since the uh, early 90s. Um, given this background, um, I think um, it would be interesting to um, to find out if this trend in income inequality um, mirrors the trend in income of uh, inequality of opportunities. And when we talk of, uh, about um, opportunities. I think it is particularly important to look at the situations of the different ethnic groups in the Philippines, particularly the indigenous uh, peoples or the IPs. Um, apparently, there has been very little work um, on, uh, uh, or uh, few studies that uh, examine the uh, inequality of opportunities um, or inequality in terms of non income indicators like um, education. And, Konti lang din yung mga studies that look into the um, situations of the different ethnic groups in the Philippines. So, um, that's um, one of the major objectives of our paper um, was to um, examine the educational inequality among ethnic groups in the Philippines. And when, um, by uh, answering this particular objective, um, we will be able to show the trends in educational inequality to identify the ethnic groups that are considered as educationally excluded and um, also determine the factors that can explain such inequality. Um, we also hope to provide uh, insights on how to address or reduce further the inequality among um, ethnic groups in terms of um, uh, non-income indicators like education. Um, for this um, study, we use um, the 2000 and 2010 census of population and housing, or CPH data sets, particularly the 10% and 20% samples, respectively, because these subsets of the census data um, contains the social economic um, attributes of the population. Uh, we use the CPH because um, it is the only, um, as far as I, as far as we know, um, it is the only um, available micro level data with the nationwide coverage that contains um, variables and uh, ethnicity and uh, education. Meron yung CBMS, pero parang kailangan mong 
mag-request from each edgy to be able to come up with the nationwide para para na data na national news so, so ito lang um, in terms of uh, variables uh, the grouping variables obviously the ethnicity and um Uh, based on the definition of the, the PSE, um, ethnicity is uh, the primary sense of belonging to, to an ethno-linguistic group, which is the group of people that are blood-related and um, share common language, um, culture, and tradition. Uh, and the ethnic grouping in the Philippines um, denotes uh, genealogical paternal as well as maternal lineage to any of the country's group of native population. So yung ethnicity natin follows the ethnicity of our um, any of our biological um, parents. Um, based on the census data, um, the Philippines has a total of 182 ethnolinguistic groups. And in 2010, um, around 142 are considered by the, uh, are considered as the uh, indigenous peoples or IP groups by the National Commission of Indigenous Peoples or NCIP. Um, for this study, um, we decided to create major groups, major ethnic groups, because we uh, didn't want to uh, to deal with so many ethnic groups. So we consulted the NCIP and they uh, suggested na i-adapt itong tatlong major groups na ito. So namely, Muslim ethnic groups, the uh, non-Muslim IPs, and the non-Muslim non-IPs. Um, we disaggregated further the the first group, the Muslim ethnic group, um, into Muslim IPs and non-Muslim IPs. According to the NCIP, um, the Muslim IPs are those that embrace the Islamic faith and at the same time continue their indigenous uh, culture and tradition as IPs. Um, and example ng mga groups na ito ay Sama Bajau, Sama Lao, Sama Bajau, Irano. The Muslim non IPs are not classified as IPs by the Office of the Muslim Affairs but profess the Islamic faith. So under this group are Magindanao, Maranao, Palawan, Nikitao, Suk, Sangi, um, Yakan. The non-Muslim IPs, on the other hand, are officially classified by the NCIP as IPs. So examples are um, Dumagat, Manopo, Aita, Ibatan, and Ibaloy. Um, the non-Muslim and IPs are those that are neither Muslim nor IP. So, ito yung mga Tagalog, Baray, Bicol, Ilongko, Ilongan. Um, for the outcome variables, we have um, years of schooling uh, among Filipinos aged 25 and over and literacy status among Filipinos aged 10 and over. Um, for our study, we, ad we adapted the concept of basic literacy. So, literate ka kapag ka marunong kang bumasa at sumulat, sumulat ng basic, uh, simple message. Yun. Um, for the purpose of this presentation, I'll only be discussing these two outcome variables. Pero marami, ka, may, marami pa kami outcome variables. May dalawa pa kami education indicators. Um, for inequality measures, uh, I'll only be showing the our, our inequality estimates for the two most commonly used measures, the G coefficient and the tails index. So let, let me now proceed to the key findings. So this slide shows the our inequality estimates for our two um, educational outcome variables, the years of schooling and literacy, as well as the decomposition of um, inequality over time, so from 2000 to 2010. Um, and the first key takeaway from this table is that the educational inequality had had been reduced from 2000 to 2010, as shown by the yeah, green arrows. So most um, estimates are I have had been reduced from 2000 to 2010. And um, this is probably one of the outcomes of the education-related programs that had been implemented by the Philippine government before 2010. So isa na yung four piece na ni Dodge ng 2008. Siguro from 2008 to 2010, may mga bata na, na nakapasok. So, na-address niya basically yung literacy. Pwede yung years of schooling. So, parang may dagdag na dalawang taon. Um, we can also see from this slide that um, literacy rate um, has not been an area of concern. Kasi yung inequality estimation is less than 0.1. Um, and 
it can also be explained by a very high literacy rate ng mga Filipinos ang agent pen and over. Noong 2010, 97.6% um, na siya. So ang taas na almost all na ng population in that segment ay literate. On the other hand, parang kailangan natin monitor yung years of schooling. So yung parang issue to ng completion. So nakakapasok naman pero hindi natatapos yung isang level. Kung yung primary level, hindi natatapos. Um, uh, kung makikita niyo dito dun sa inequality estimates, hindi siya ganun kataas. Pero point two, hindi pa siya nakakaabot dun sa warning level na point four. Pero baka kasi pag nakaligtaan o napabayaan, baka umabot siya dun at mag-exceed siya. So yun yung gusto natin iwasan. Um, in 2010, the average years of schooling of Filipinos aged 25 and over is only around 8 to 9, which 8 to 9, yun, so years, which is equivalent to some high school. So hindi pa, hindi pa, parang on the average, yung mga Pilipino ay hindi pa nakakaabot ng high school. Eh kailangan natin usually, di ba kahit sa mga, um, sa labor market, kailangan high school graduate ka to be able to, to get an easy job and receive a good pay. Um, merong mga groups na ang average years of schooling is only 1 to 2 years. So, yun, dalawang taon lang sila. Pero meron din ang matataas, more than 10. So, the distribution is more or less unequal. So, ang gusto natin mangyari is um, yung nasa uh, mga groups na 1 to 2, lang, 2 years lang, yung average years of schooling, ito maas. Another key takeaway from this slide is that the within group component uh, largely explains or contributed to the uh, the total inequality. So this means that the smaller ethnic groups within each of the major ethnic groups are heterogeneous in terms of um, uh, educational outcomes than the major ethnic groups. So iniisip ko nga, baka mas okay na. So, so later, so sa susunod na mga slides, ma feeling ko um, Pwedeng itry namin na mag-recruit. Pwedeng yung mga Muslim IPs, pwede siguro siyang isama dun sa mga non-Muslim IPs. So parang isang group na lang lahat ng IPs. And then, um, yung, non, yung Muslim non-IPs, um, hihiwalay siya. Baka magbago lang yung estimate. So that, that is something na pwede namin explore later. <coughs> so yun nga, um, yung finding na yun, um, Gusto na uh, would tell us na kailangan natin i-identify yung mga ethnic groups na mayroong mga low educational outcomes. And um, syempre hindi nag-stop nag doon. Um, aside from that, gusto natin malaman kung anong reason behind it para mas makapag-design tayo ng mas, mas appropriate na intervention. Um, we also would like to look at the inequality estimates for each of the major groups. So this slide shows that among the ethnic groups, Muslim had the highest educational inequality. The good news is that the educational outcomes of all the major ethnic groups um, improved from 2000 to 2010. So as shown by the, uh, the green down arrows. And the Muslim had posted the largest reduction in educational disparity. And um, possible explanation dito is yung um, Efforts related to mainstream of madrasa education starting 2004. So, meron mga nag-increase na number of private, uh, nag-increase yung number of private madrasa or madaris. Uh, and upgrading, uh, na-upgrade din yung capacity using um, yung financial assistance binigay sa kanila. Like yung, um, nag-inamit nila din sa pag-establish ng pilot schools, pag-upgrade ng facilities, and pag-contact ng trainings for teachers and administrators among others. But despite that um, improvement, um, the Muslim ethnic groups still have um, high education disparities, in ter especially in terms of years of schooling. Um, in the literature, um, yung Gini coefficient daw na, na 0.4, about 0.4, eh, masyado nang malaki. Yun. So makikita niyo yung Muslim, yung si Gini coefficient niya, mataas na siya, uh, nag-exceed na siya dun sa warning level na 0.4. And hindi lang yun, yung non-Muslim IPs, um, although hindi pa siya nakakaabot sa point 0.4, baka, baka siya umabot or mag-go beyond siya. So kailangan din natin siya monitor. So let's now look more closely at the educational outcomes of Muslim and non-Muslim IPs. So first, with the, the Muslim, uh, Muslim um, ethnic groups. So ito yung um, 
education and outcomes or years of schooling and literacy rate ng mga Muslim um, groups. So makikita niyo dyan yung tatlong pinakamababang um, years of schooling ay yung Muslim IPs na Bajau, Sama Lahot, and uh, Sama Bajau. So less than 40% lang literacy rate, tapos average of 1 to 2 years lang yung na-spend nila sa formal schooling. Um, and um, so most of the members of these groups are considered, considered as uh, educationally excluded. And um, the possible factors na tingin namin eh, makakapag-explain ng finding na to eh, one is yung location. The majority of the members of these um, some, uh, groups, yung Sama Lago, Sama Bajau, and Bajau, are located in conflict-stricken areas like Zamaga del Sur. So, al sa literature, armed conflicts has been um, the, uh, the primary cause of uh, displacements of many ethnic groups, especially in Mindanao, which could undermine children's access to and our interest in learning. Another possible explanation is that Sama people are migratory as they are living in boats and are considered as sea gypsies. Similar to the displaced whites, children members of migratory uh, group would find it hard to complete, say, a primary education level if their family is frequently moving from one region or island to another. Another is the lack of understanding of the value of education. So Sama people are said to be not required to participate in economic activities and not forced to go to Islamic schools. Thus, acquiring an education is only an option for them. Um, so they probably do not understand the value of um, education. Um, another possible factor is the fear of uh, the cultural culturalization. So given that the Tepet accredited schools before 2010 um, have not included Islamic faith and Arabic language in their um, curriculum, and most religious subjects teach about Christianity, in fact, Catholicism. Perhaps there are still um, Muslim parents these days who often go to send their school, uh, children to these mainstream schools, but instead send their children to traditional madaris because of fear of deculturalization. And another um, factor is that um, Perhaps the, some Muslim children who initially entered them at accredited schools may be discouraged to stay there for long. So completion problem siya. Especially if they would observe na ethnic, uh, parang belong lang sila dun sa minority. So syempre pag, nas, pag feeling mo ang minority ka lang or isa o ilan lang kayong member ng um, ethnic group, uh, parang yung trust mo dun sa ibang, ibang kaklase mo baka, baka wala or kaya man eh, um, hindi ka comfortable dun sa environment. So they would opt, yung children na yun, they would opt na to, to go to school. Another possible factor is poverty, especially um, among those with high um, groups na may high literacy rate but low education level. So yung, hindi nila nakukumplit, probably, hindi nila nakukumplit yung isang level kasi um, mahira, um, high cost of um, education. Um, so na, na, let's now look at the educational outcomes of some um, non-Muslim IPs. So selected IPs lang to na may mga mababang um, educational outcomes. Um, prob uh, possible reason is the lack of understanding of the value of education. Um, Nag-interview kami dati ng NCIP office sa Tarlac and then sinabi sa amin, tinanong namin bakit, ano kaya possible reason bakit mababa yung um, education outcomes sa mga mag in which is an AITA group um, originally from Tarla. And then sinabi niya na nakakausap niya lagi yung elder ng community, ethnic community, at sinasabi sa kanya na um, tinatanong siya actually, bakit daw sila ini-encourage na mag-aral? E contento naman na sila dun sa buhay nila sa mundo. So hindi, clearly, hindi naiintindihan ng elder pa yun ng community yung value ng education. So, Paano pa natin may expect yung members? Another possible factor is maybe poverty also. So, yun. Um, uh, ideally, dapat nagtanda kami ng FGDs with those specific groups, but um, hindi hindi enough yung budget to do that. So, ang ginawa na lang namin is um, nagtanda kami ng key informant interviews with the NCIP, Tapos National Commission on Muslim Filipinos, tsaka yung sa UB Dilimans, um, Institute of Islamic Studies and Asian Center. So, and we came up with, um, based on those um, 
based on the research and based on the ideas na nakuha namin dun sa mga interviews na yun. Ito yung mga recommendations namin. So, yung first is, um, although that's na, na launch na yung iPad, yung Indigenous People's Education Program, um, na probably nag-increase ng school participation among the selected IP groups. Um, tinignan namin yung data on iPad, yung number of IP learners per ethnicity group in public elementary and secondary schools for 2016 and 2017. And we noted na baka kailangan pang i-promote um, yung higher participation among specific IP groups with low educational outcomes like Langilan, Magachi, and Buhid. Kasi wala sila doon. Walang parang yung mga groups na yun hindi represented doon sa uh, na, na cover ng program. So a wise possible strategy is to um, conduct dialogues on the importance of value and value of education between parents and educated members of the ethnic community. So pwede yung mga um, educated members mag-share ng personal experiences and views about education para hopefully ma-encourage yung parents na isend yung children to school. Another one is to encourage um, parents to take part in the design of indigenous curriculum or um, also preparation of instructional materials and facilitation of school activities among others para ma-feel ng parents na they are more involved in the learning process of their children. Another um, is another um, uh, recommendation is probably to design um, a mostly education program similar to the IPED and adapt similar strategies in um, the first um, recommendation. Meron mga developments na yung newly instituted bar yung RA 10908, yung Integrated History Act of 2016 na is gustong isama yung sa history subjects, yung cultures and traditions ng Muslims. And also yung meron rin niya ng policy guidelines on madrasa education to the K-12 basic education program. Pero noong 2017 pa lang siya. So baka yung mga developments na yun, yung effect ng mga developments na yun, makita natin um, pag nag-conduct ng 2020 census of population. Um, another is probably to enhance madrasa, madrasa education development programs for Muslims within and outside BARM through dialogues between the government and the madrasa um, administrators para maintindihan din ng government kung ano yung needs ng mga madrasa or madaris. Um, uh, also, Set of interventions for Muslims and other ethnic groups who ancestrally live in uh, conflict-stricken areas can be different. So, for example, uh, there may be there may be a need to intensify efforts in addressing armed conflicts and rebuilding war-torn communities so that school participation and completion rates in these communities can increase. Um, while this solution may not be feasible in the short run, an alternative solution is to establish uh, promptly a uh, vocational boarding schools for out-of-school youth in conflict-stricken areas and mobile boat schools in island in our coastal provinces. Out-of-school out of youth have been uh, the easy target for recruitment by the radical groups. So encouraging them to pursue education can probably save them, save them from becoming violent extremists and at the same time provide them with skills and knowledge necessary to enter the labor market. Another supply side um, intervention um, maybe is the design and implementation of scholarship programs for financially challenged members of Muslim and IP groups, yung mga hindi nakakatapos. Um, this type of intervention can help narrow the gap between ethnic groups in the initial levels of education due to unequal initial endowments of families. So meron na, yung, meron na tayong modified CCT uh, since 2015 which can help address the low access to secondary education among these um, itinerant indigenous families and those that are displaced by um, man-made disasters like um, armed conflicts. But probably the uh, evaluation um, of this um, uh, CCT's program component um, based on the outcomes every school year can be conducted to ensure that it's making a significantly positive impact on school participation rates of IDs. And there is a need to fine tune the targeting of beneficiaries of the said programs before they, they are scaled, scaled up. So, siguro yung mga na identify namin ng mga, very, na, na mga groups na may very low educational outcomes, like Sama Laon, Sama Badjao, Badjao, Langilan, Chakamagachi. Pwede sana represented sila doon sa mga 
uh, beneficiaries no MCCT. And lastly, um, a comprehensive database of ethnic group population in the Philippines is considered as an uh, essential input in the crafting of specific interventions for various ethnic groups. The NCIP can take the lead in building this database in partnership with the PSA because ito yung nagkakantak ng census and a team of consultants composed of anthropologists who can provide guidance in correctly classifying the major ethnic groups. Kasi maraming pang issue dun sa pag-classify ng ethnic groups eh. Medyo madiwara siya actually nung nag-interview kami ng NCIP. Um, the NCIP in collaboration with state universities and colleges, civil society organizations, and non-government organizations can also be encouraged to do cultural mapping, conduct historical studies, and our formulate research agenda, which can be the basis for the formulation of more specific strategies or more appropriate um, interventions that would, that would help address the issues concerning the ethnic groups, especially the IDs. So, in po. Thank you. So thank you so much, Ian, for that very comprehensive uh, presentation. Our next speakers will have a shared presentation. Let me introduce them to you. We have Ms. Carol Salibay, the focal person of Indigenous Peoples Education, and she's also a teacher at Botolani Zambales. Her co-presenter is Ms. Helen Abara. She is also a teacher at the Paralang Bayan ng mga Aida ng Zambales. Friends, I give you Teacher Carol and Teacher Helen. Kinakabahan po ako. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Eko, Lakas High School. Kami po ay matatagpuan sa Botolan, Sambales. Bago pa po nag nagkaroon ng, I think, yung, yung IT education, bago pa po na po yung Excelio, no? noong 1982 po, ang aning pong samahan, lubos na alyansa ng mga katutubong IT ng Sambales, ay nagpapatupad na po ng uh, literacy no, sa pamamagitan po ng Franciscan Missionaries of Mary of FMM Sisters. Pero sa kasamang palad po, pumunta kang pinatubo, so ang aming pong pamayanan at iba pang pamayanan ng mga katubong Aita ay nanasettle po sa Dihaw Villar, Botolan, Sambales. So, ang aming pong uh, community uh, na, na pinamumunuan noon po ni Uncle Garlic Dumulod pero namatay na po siya, no? ay kasama po sila at ilang mga elders and leaders namin na aming pamayanan na sana ay humiling sa death and na sana ay magkaroon kami ng sarili namin paaralan. Kasi po ang aming po mga estudyante, no, kasama po ako noon na nag-aaral po kami sa baba, eh, sinabi po namin yung baba ay sa, sa, sa may, medyo may syudad po. No po? Kaya lang po yung ibang mga kapakatutubo ay nakaranas ng mga diskriminasyon. And then, nagkaroon na po ngayon ng, ng, ng parang sa IP education, then ganyan. So, sabi po namin, sige, bakit hindi po natin subukan makipaglabi sa division namin para magkaroon ng sarili namin paralan sa loob ng aming pamayanan. So, ang nangyari po, sana ay ang nire-request namin ay magkaroon ng elementary school kasi mas gusto namin magsimula sa pinaka-basic, pinaka pinaka-bata pinaka pinaka para yung, yung pagmumold ng mga ng, 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 ng katutubong bata, ng katutubong mag-aaral ay okay. Kasi po ang nangyayari, napansin ng mga matatanda namin, parang nagiging iba yung kinalabasan ng estudyante Aita na nag-aaral sa, sa baba. Ano po? So sabi ng ganun, bakit hindi natin simulan sa pinakabata? Para mas okay yung, 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 ano niya, yung, yung pag-mold sa kanya. Kaya lang po, ang nangyayari po kasi, Ang elementary, uh, Bihaw Elementary School ay malapit lang doon sa aming pamayanan. Kaya nakipag-usap ko po kami sa aming SDS dati, si Dr. Ka, uh, Garma, sabi niya, bakit hindi na lang ano, high school? Yun po. Pumayag naman po ang aming pamayanan since kami naman po, mga ilang, mga ilang ITA graduate naman po, ay mga secondary teachers ang tinapos po natin. So pumayag po ang aming pamayanan. Kaya nga po noong June 2013, Sinimulan na po namin ng aming eskwelahan. 
So kagaya po na nabanggit ko kanina, ang school po namin ay matatagpuan mismo sa loob ng aming pamayanan. Kasi nga po, sabi rin po ng DepEd, ang, ang lupa ay minuno ang aking classroom. Kaya lang po, gusto ko lang linawin, ang aming po pamayanan na hindi na ang aming lupa ay minuno. Kasi nga po, pumuntok ang pinatubo. So, nasettle na po kami sa ibang lugar. So, itong area po namin na mayroong 3,760 square meters ay matatagpuan sa mismong loob ng aming pamayanan. Pumayag po ang aming pamayanan na ipagamit ang lupa. Nagkaroon po ng use of rock sa, sa DepEd. So, sabi mo ng David sa amin, sige, maghanap kayo ng mga learners. E eh, noong mga panahon na po yun, ang aming pong mga high school ay merong 28. So, ang ginawa po namin, pinull out namin yung aming mga, mga estudyante at nagsimula po kami na magtayo ng grade 7 at saka grade 8 po yan. So, noong school year 2013, 2014, meron po kami 28 na estudyante. Sumunod po na taon, 2014, 2015, nagkaroon na po kami ng 45 na estudyante at nadagdagan din po kami ng teachers. Ito pong nasa gitna na nakabilaw. Hindi po siya IP, hindi po siya ITA, pero okay naman po siya sa aming, uh, sa aming eskwelahan. Yung pagkikiugnayan po niya sa amin ay okay po. So yun po ang aming kauna-unahang recognition. <laughs> Ganyan lang po. Noong 2015, 2016, naging 87 na po kami. Parang gina ng marami. 2016, 2017, 122 students na po. 2017, 2018, 179 learners. 2018, 2019, meron na po kami 208. Ito pong, uh, ito pong nandito sa bandang kaliwa, 74, ay uh, yung 106, uh, 165. Yan po ang aming junior high school. At yung aming 43 po ay ang aming senior high school. At ngayong taon nga po, ay nasa 226 na po kami. Ayan po, junior at saka senior po. Ayan po ang aming mga classrooms. Kung mapapansin po ninyo, para po siyang mga bahay kubo. No, yung etong etong nandito po sa bandang kanan ng screen natin. Meron po kaming grade 7, dalawa po 'yan. Kulang po kasi kanina ng classroom kaya hinati po namin yung isang malaki kubo namin, dalawang section na ng grade 7. Grade 12 po namin kasi konti lang naman sila. And then yung amin pong grade 10 room. Bakit po ganyan ang aming classroom? Parang parang bahay kubo. Kasi din po na nakita din po namin na mas okay yung mas okay yung mga bata mag-aral kapag yung parang feeling nila nasa bahay lang. Yung hindi sila na, yung sabi nga po nila natin sa DepEd na hindi sila nakakulong lang sa apat na sulok ng, ano, ng classroom. So, habang nag, nag-discuss po kami, minsan, okay, nag-e-exam sila, nakagal sila. ay po. So, parang ano naman po. Okay naman po yung, ano, yung lecture namin. Mas, mas feel nila. Kasi po, ang ayta din po kasi, hindi naman po kami yung mga, ano lang, mga batang nakaupo lang ng ganyan na sobrang tagal. Hindi po ganun. Kikilos at kikilos yan na kayo magpapaalam po yan. So, kaya ganyan po yung aming classroom. Kaya lang po, ang hindi lang maganda sa ganyang klase ng classroom, hindi po siya pong matagalan. Sa ngayon po, yung aming pinakamalaking classroom ay butas-butas na po yung, ano, yung, yung bubong. Opo, kasi gawa po siya sa kukul. Ayan po ang iba pa namin mga school facilities. Ito pong aming school and community library ay dinonate po sa amin ng uh, Rotary Club of Makati. Karamihan po actually ng building namin ay mga donations. Mga na aming mga partners and stakeholders po. Ganun. Kahit po ang aming school stage ay parang open na bahay ko po. Ayan po. So ang aming pong paaralan No, ta taon-taon po ay nagdiriwang kami ng mga IP Day, Indigenous People's Day. So, noong 2013 po, medyo marami-rami po yung aming bisita. Dumating din po ang ating uh, dating uh, Epsayo coordinator po, si Sir Butch Rufino sa amin. Nakiisa po siya. Kasama din po 
noong 2014 ang inner will at saka panlipi. Ito pong panlipi ay isang organisasyon ng mga abogado na tumutulong sa mga katutubo. Eh po, uh, itong nakaraang taon lang po, no? Inilunch po namin ang aming orthography, ang sambal botolan kasi po um, ang alam ko po kasi noon hindi pa talaga ganoon ka okay yung orthographya ng sambal botolan ng aming uh, na aming lingwahe. Ano po so pero dahil po sa ano sa eto nga po na uuso na yung iPad. So yung aming pong division in fairness naman po pati po yung aming mga uh, mga teachers po kahit yung aming mayor sumusuporta po sa IP education. So yun nga po na nakaraang taon na launch na po namin ang aming working orthography. Meron po akong sample diyan na dala. Hindi na po namin din display doon sa ano ano baka po kunin e eh, wala po mang wala po kami ibang count. <laughs> Tingnan niyo na lang pa e po. Ayun po. Sa division po din namin, nagkaroon po kami ng National IP Month celebration at et, eto nga po nakaraang taon lamang ay uh, pinangunahan ng aming school at ng aming pamayanan. Uh, sa division po yan ginanap. So kami po ay nagpakita ng I iba uh, ibang kultura namin. Uh, pinatry po namin sa iba. Pumayag naman po ang aming mga elders and leaders na ituro namin sa iba. Ayan po ang aming chairman po, ang aming mga IKSP facilitators. Nagtuturo po sila kung paano magluto sa kawayan, paano magpana, maglaro ng basketball katutubo. Ganun po. Sa mga, ang mga ano po namin ay mga teachers po ng iba pang mga IP school sa Botolan, San Valles. Sa aming pong paaralan, maliban po sa division, sa aming pong paaralan ay meron din po kaming uh, pagdiriwang na ginanap. Ayan nga po, nagturo kami, may mga bisita po kami mga dumating, medyo marami-rami po sila ngayong taon. Nagturo po kami kung paano maglaro ng basketball, katutubo, payuwa. Payuwa po ay paano gumawa ng apoy sa kawayan. Nagkaroon din po kami ng pamana, yung bow and arrow po. Ayan po. Na nabanggit po kanina I think nung anong presenter natin nauna, no? Yung aming po mga classrooms, no? Ay in-involve po talaga namin ng aming pamayanan. Hindi lamang po yung parents ng aming mga learners para po meron yung parang feeling na pag-angkin. Amin tong eskwelahan na to, kasama kami sa gumawa. Kaya kasama po sila sa sa gumawa talaga ng ng aming ano ah, ng aming mga classrooms. At ngayon nga po, inabangit ko kanina, uh, halos karamihan po ng aming mga classrooms, ang aming mga buildings po ay uh, dinonate po. So, nagkaroon po kami ng groundbreaking ceremony, kasama po yung nagdunig sa amin ng Project Pearl. Siyempre po, hindi nawawala po yan. Lagi po yan, uh, biniblessing po namin yung aming uh, mga, mga, mga classrooms. Pero sa pamamagitan po ng, 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 ng Itaway. At noon din po, no, uh, nagkaroon kami ng blessing nung room namin. Uh, dumating po ang ating uh, Deputy Secretary dati, si Brother Armin Luistro. At nagkaroon po kami ng MOA signing. Pag sina sinabi po natin MOA signing, nagkaroon po ng, ng agreement ang aming pamayanan at ang DepEd namin sa Sambales, Division of Sambales, na sa pamamahala po ng aming eskwelahan na hindi lamang DepEd ang 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 uh, mamamahala. Ibig sabihin po, yung, yung mga papasok ng mga teachers po doon sa amin, kailangan pagkausapin po ng aming mga ng aming mga ng, ng pamayanan, ng aming mga ng aming mga leaders, ng aming elders. Kasi po, yun nga, nabanggit kanina, kung hindi IP ang teacher, uh, gusto ko lang po linawin, public school po ang aming school, ang lakas high school. So, pag hindi po IP yung teacher, kasi hindi naman po namin kailangan hindi namin kayang sabihin na, okay, ito lang yung dalhin yung teacher sa amin. Pero kung may dumating pong teacher sa amin, binibigyan po namin ng orientation. Parang ganun po yung agreement. Ano po? Ayan nga po. Maraming teachers na dead and secretary. Ayan din po. Sa amin pong school, uh, sinusubukan po namin mag-formulate ng aming curriculum na 
para lamang sa mga ayta na nandun sa amin sa school. Hindi po namin, kasi po sa Sambales, marami po kaming ibang mga ethnic group pa, marami pang ibang katutubo na nandun. Yung kagaya na nabanggit kanina ni Sir, meron kami uh, mga mag Maliban po sa mag meron pong mag hindi mag -bukon. Pero kami po ay mga sambal, botolan. So yung aming po curriculum na ginagawa, na hanggang ngayon po hindi pa rin po tapos, yun po ay para doon sa aming eskwelahan na. Pero pwede naman po na pwede po namin i-share doon sa iba pang IP na 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 ayta pala, no? Na nasa Sambales kasi yung aming pong kultura, yung aming mga ibang uh, ibang mga kaugalian ay pareho lang din naman po sa kanila. Ay gusto ko lang din pong banggitin yung yung kanina po, no? Uh, ang aming pong uh, yung aming iPad curriculum na ginagawa po ay hindi lang po teacher sa mga kasama, pati po yung mga, yung pamayanan, yung aming mga leaders, yung aming mga elders. So, hindi, uh, hindi siya yung parang hindi valid. Kasi ang mga nilalagay namin dun ay kasama, nagmula sa mga talagang ayta. Ay, yun po, nag-benchmark din po ang La Union, Division of La Union sa amin. Kasi meron din daw po silang mga, uh, mga kinikitar dun na IPs. Ang uh, ano mga bisita sa paaralan? Ayan po. Sa aming pong eskwelahan, no, uh, dahil po merong IP education, ang, ang aming pong eskwelahan ay naglaan ng isang oras sa isang buong linggo ng IPSP sessions. Ibig sabihin, Indigenous Knowledge System and Practices. Meron po kami mga uh, IPSP facilitators yung hindi po sila mga teacher na graduate ng, ng education, pero sila po ang tanging nakaka makapagturo lamang. Hindi hindi kami pwedeng kumuha ng sino sinong teacher kasi ituturo nila ay kulturang ayta. So ang kinuha po namin mga teacher ay yung mga talaga nasa pamayanan po. So ang aming sa kasalukuyan po, meron po kaming dalawang ITSD facilitator, ang aming pong chairman at saka si Kuya Rick po. Ayan po, si Ando Brian po. Sumasali din po ang aming uh, eskwelahan sa mga Boy Scout, Girl Scout, at syempre nananalo po kami kasi alam naman po natin sa survival, di ba po? <laughs> Magaling kami dyan. <laughs> Ayan po, ang aming senior high school po ang in-offer po naman ay TVL na Agri-Crab Production. And po, yung nasabi na rin po kanina ni Sir na nandito dati, yung gumawa ng mga learning materials na angkop talaga para sa amin. At yun nga po naman ang ginagawa ng aming division ng aming paaralan. No, kasama po kami sa pag-develop ng aming orthografiya, ng aming mga learning materials, ng aming mga books, mga stories. Ano po, kasama po ang SIL Philippines. At taon-taon po ay uh, ginaganap uh, sa aming division no? ang um, orientation po sa mga school heads, mga bagong school heads, mga teachers na, na bago, syempre po, bago sila isabak sa, sa gyera, sa IP school sila mapunta, bigyan muna sila po ng parang orientation, bigyan sila ng ano ba ang inaasahan ninyo, baka naman makulture siya po sila sa akin. Ayan nga po, sa sakit po, meron kami sampung junior high school teachers, tatlo na senior high, at meron po kaming dalawang facilitator. Ayan po, utilization of baseline data, yun nga po, a proposal to establish Lakas High School, yun nga po din namin yan, development of IP curriculum and modules, identification of learners, identification of IP teachers and facilitators, mapping of partners and stakeholders, roadmap of Lakas IP challenges. Study on the impact of IP curriculum and the preservation of IP culture and advancing IP rights and self-determination. Further study on the inclusive education in IPED, documentation of IP teachers' stories in IPED, and development in tracking of IP and non-IP learners. Malaka po, asalaman. So, mamaya sa mga katanungan, magsasama kayo ni Miss Helen. Okay. 
Uh, sa tiyang naman na napaka-inspiring ng mga kwento po ng ating mga kapatid na katutubo. So, sana matulungan natin sila sa... Uh, na mabigyan din sila ng quality education. Okay. So, um, we have a lone reactor in this session. So, again, let me give her a quick introduction. She is a board member of HINET and lead for ALS and Adult Learning and Education. She has served in various capacities such as consultant, facilitator, process evaluator, and researcher in different areas such as children and women's rights, health, IBs, and education among others. Friends, let us all welcome Ms. May Cinco. Magandang hapon, good afternoon. Um, nasanay ako na magganoon na ng notes, kaya dala ko dito, pero hindi ko na ipa-flash. So, una, um, dun kay Mr. Christian, nina, uh, unang-una gusto kong pagot, yung uh, education network o in the Philippines is an advocacy organization composed of 130 organizations from the sun to Mindanao. Ngayon, pasasalamat ako doon sa SAVE na inibitahan kami dito at papasalamat na rin sa PIDS in many of our advocacy work. Hala, like for example, kasama namin, nakiti-involve kami kala Atty. Debbie para i-push talaga yung passage of the ALS bill and also the inclusive education for learners with disabilities. So, para yung office po yun ni Congressman Roman. Romulo, so we use this data for our advocacy. So napakalaki kaya eh, talagang gusto namin pumunta talaga dito sa research forum. So isa yon sa policy advocacy, magkaroon talaga ng batas o so, ALS, katulad ng binanggit ni Atty. Kalina, tapos sa inclusive education then for learners with disability. And with that batas, gusto talaga natin, meron talaga ang budget, no? Hindi lang basta batas. And another thing, yung isa, kaya much involved din kami sa mga ganitong klase. And we thank PIDS. At gusto talaga namin ipaabot sa inyo. We use your data, pero ina-acknowledge namin <laughs> sa lahat. Yung, yung sinasabi namin, yung initiative, yung alternative budget initiative, o yung hobby. While there is an, uh, nag-propose yung mga ating lawmakers, at sa mga LGUs and different government agency for their budget, it's also about time na may vote tayo, yung uh, civil society organization. Now, we also propose yung ating uh, tawag dito, sa so, tingin natin ay budget or public expenditure para dito sa katulad na mga grassroots initiative projects. No? At ma maganda nga tinanggap ng, ano, ng Committee on Basic Education and culture, yung ating ano, yung proposal may stand na gano'n yung ano, committee na at least 1% nung budget for DepEd kasi malaki-laki din yun, pinikwenta na nga namin, ay malaan talaga sa alternative learning system. Okay, so yung kanina naman, kita-kita natin yung presentation ni Mr. Christian na napaka-detalye, napaka-comprehensive. So that's one thing. And Yun nga, yung isa, uh, let me just open my... Uh, Tingakabang daw si Caro, medyo tinamahan din kasi. <laughs> Baba, gusto ko lang kasi basahin yung... yung uh, actually... Actually, yung result nung, ano, nung ginawa nila na based on ano, uh, housing, uh, it also reveals yung, ano, yung research ng DepEd. No? Yung sinasabi nga, dropouts are especially high in the poorest region. Department of Education data showed that among the country's 17 regions, 
the autonomous autonomous region pa naman. Kaya ang autonomous region ni Maslin Mindanao, with one of the highest rate of poverty incidence, also has the highest dropout rate, which increased by 76% nung it, ano, school year 2012 to 2013. So, yun din yung datos na DepEd. Tapos, ang gusto ko din doon sa study nila, uh, sa study, yung, ano, yung measure of uh, opportunities, yung sinasabi yung inequalities of opportunities, hindi lang income base, but more on the ano, human opportunity index, like yung access to education, access to basic services kasi inugnay nila yung access natin sa uh, safe water drinking at saka doon sa access to electricity doon sa study na ginawa although nag-focus talaga siya doon sa education. So yun yung isang uh, maganda doon. And the depth head, yung balik tayo doon sa ano sa one of the ano talaga disadvantage in terms of accessibility sa education, yung IP, yung indigenous people. Yung response nga doon ng DepEd, which is very progressive naman, yung IPED. With the DepEd order, nung ano, nung, kasi ito ang isa sa mga order ng DepEd na right-based ang approach. Kasi it was based on the IPRA or Indigenous Peoples Rights Act and also yung, ano, yung sa IPED order ng number 62. So, yun nang naging basis din at ng lakas, tama? Lakas na sinabi ni Carol kanina na negotiation nila with the local government unit and the division to have their lakas uh, school within the community. So, maganda yung ganung klaseng initiative. Paano natin ginagamit yung mga batas? Yung existing batas na, no? Titignan lang natin. Kung paano natin ginagamit to the advantage nung ating gustong pagsilbihan like the indigenous people. So, yun yung isa. Yung, meron din sinabi, yung reason, may, may anecdote si, ano kanina si Christian, na sabi daw doon sa Tarla, e, bakit pa sila mag-aaral, eh dahil, ano, contento na sila. Meron din dati, nung nag-field kami doon sa isang area na <laughs> binigyan namin ng field work noon, yung sa lakas, Ang sabi nila, buti nga na bago, so this might help siguro sa ibang IP. Yung mga elders nun, ayaw ng edukasyon. You know why? Sabi nila, nagpaaral sila ng mga haita uh, from Zambales. Yung isang lawyer pa eh. Tama ba yung kwento niyon? Tapos bandang huli, sila pa yung naging kalaban. No? Parang <laughs> naging iba na, eh bakit kami maging edukasyon? Kinakalaban nga kami. So ganun yung ano. Yung isa. Pero yon throughout the advocacy, ay na, ano na, na tawag dito, na bago na. Yung isang specific din, medyo ano to, uh, yun nga, uh, with NCIP uh, categorization, maganda din yung binagit ni Christian. Gusto, gusto ko din yan, gusto din namin yun. Yung ano, yung mas pag-aralan natin yung classification of IP. Tapos ang isang maganda doon sa study nila, IP specific yung mga datos eh. So, ma 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 makikita mo yon kasi bawat IP, kung ang disability, may disability specific ang, ang kailangan nila, yung IP din, may IP specific. Yung isa lang, gusto kong bigyan lang ng uh, what is this? Uh, bigyan ng stress kasi yung INET po ay meron kaming collision ng INET doon sa Mindanao. We, kasi na isang nabanggit doon sa study kanina ng kay Christian about the situation in Mindanao. So nagkaroon ng consultation kasama yung mga bubuok ng farm doon. Ito po yung ano, coincide doon sa sinasabi nila. Uh, isang problema ng farm, let me quote lang na, doon, yung resulta doon sa workshop. Sabi, ni, sabi nila, Barn may have ma many money, but the challenge is how we will spend this given the COA guidelines. And most of the people are new in the government bureaucracy. For example, on the top, top of barn budget, DepEd Central Office wanted to download around 4 billion. Kaya lang, they have to spend it 
this December. So, paano naman yun? Bagong-bago pa sila sa administration. So, ibig sabihin, this opportunity is good for them. At the same time, kailangan bigyan din sila ng gobyerno ng suporta. No? Kasi this is a good example no IP, IPED interaction. Kasi meron kang from local, meron kang very specific sa Mindanao. So, magandang ano, magandang pag-aralan talaga. So that kung si IB gusto sa next uh, research forum ay makita na yung impact ng ADM, kami naman, syempre gusto din namin makita na may progress na rin sa ating IPED, no? With this initiative yung part. Kasi sayang, may mga resources and everything. So, ito lang. Ito yung mga gusto nila. Just to update you. At saka, baka mag-interesado din, page. Yung gusto nila talaga, yung kanina yung mga, mga ang tawag dito, yung mga agenda or mga reasons na gustong halong kating panpag-aaral ng kanang Christian. Ito po yung gusto din nila na lumabas do sa workshop. This is really attended by the bar, ano, ministers and ano, yung mga teachers. Capacity building on Madrasa School, IP communities involving parents and CSO. School and Education Monitoring aligned with SDG and Right to Education. Minister and Efficiency and Education Delivery. Policy Dialogues. Paano nga ba yan? Building more champions about the IP education and madrasa education. Mapping of IP communities na pwede natin bigyan pag mula yun. And piloting innovative ALS. Livelihood, TESDA, and other skills and enterprises development. Advocacy for local government and also the budget advocacy and training. So yun po, maraming salamat doon sa mga presentation. And the good thing about this presentation, bola sa isang micro, macro level hanggang doon sa community initiative. Thank you. Salamat po, Ms. May, sa inyong uh, napaka-comprehensive po na insight din na pagbibigay sa amin ng maraming kaalaman. And of course, for using peace studies, at this point, um, uh, may I call on our speakers and uh, Miss May for the open forum, Miss Helen and uh, Miss uh, Carol, Mr. Ian. Punta na po kayo dito sa stage. Okay, so simula na po tayo sa ating open forum. Sino po ang gusto maunang magtanong? Yes, ma. Uh, ako po si Sister Gida. Salamat sa mga presentation, uh, lalo na yung sa, sa lakas. Uh, natuto ako magkita si Kuya Carlin as a teacher lang. Yung, dahil inclusive education, yung ating tinatalakay, ang nagkaroon ako ng insight, lagi natin sinasabing educate them, uh, bring education to them. Naisip ko, bakit hindi natin pwedeng baguhin ng paradigm that we also learn, we get educated by the ways of the those with disabilities. They have ways, no? that we have to learn. Tapos, yung sa mga bachaw, yung mga sa mga katutubo, uh, we also would like to learn from them, get educated from them. Like, uh, we are a very colorful people as Filipinos. Pagka bang, yung ma-educate tayo ng anong ibig sabihin ng headdress nila, anong ibig sabihin ng beads nila, anong ibig sabihin ng colors nila, pagka, pag, Mga examples lang yun, pagka dominant na pigs, kulay black, kulay red, kulay blue, uh, anong ibig sabihin ng mga ways, mga symbols? So yun siguro yung kanina nga, uh, nahabang maganda yung presentation niyan, 
may na, ma, ma, nagkaroon ako ng insight na doon sa education, ano nga bang ibig sabihin ng education? Baka tinitignan natin ang education mula lang sa ating punto de vista. Pero merong education, learning process na mula sa punto de vista ng mga hindi nasa mainstream. So, yun, uh, ano ko lang yun, uh, mga insights na pwede kayong mag-react. Thank you po. So, we'll start with, uh, siguro si Ms. Carol muna. And then after that, and together with Ms. Helen, tapos si, ano, si uh, Sir Ian. And then, uh, Ms. Cinco will, if you want to add something po later. Okay po. Hello po. And sir, yun nga po, kaya, kaya nga po yung aming eskwelahan po ano, ay inopen talaga namin, hindi lamang sa puro mga ayta lang. No? Kasi tumang, tumatanggap din po kami ng mga hindi ayta. Kahit po yung mga teachers. Yun nga po, ang ginawa na lang, syempre wala naman po hindi pwedeng makuha sa mga butik masapan, binibigyan na lang po namin sila ng orientation. Ano po ba yung paano po ba kami mag-isip, paano kami gumalaw, para hindi kami yung parang parang nakakairitan na galaw ng galaw na ganyan. Yun po, parang ipaintindi. Yun nga po, bigyan sila ng uh, sa English way, race awareness, sabi nga po nila. Ano po, kaya nga po, yung aming pong pamayanan at swelahan din, ayun, sumasali kami sa mga iba't ibang uh, ang tawag dito, uh, activities po, no, sa aming, sa aming division. Para, yun po, para makita din ng iba na, na, na hindi pa nakakita sa amin. Kasi po, Ang isip, baka ang isip pa rin, ano ba ang mga ayta? Mababa, ma makapalang lagi, maitim. Ayta po ako. Isa po akong ayta. Yung tatay ko po hindi, yung nanay ko po ay ayta. Ayta po ako. Ayun po. So, parang ano yun nga po yung sabi ni, ni sister na ka kami din sa aming pamayanan ay, yun nga, pwede kami magturo. So, open po ang aming skalahan, ang aming uh, pamayanan para, para po sa mga gustong matuto. Thank you, uh, Ms. Carol. Uh, Teacher Helen, would you, love, uh, would you like to add something? So, ang tanong po, magandang hapon po. Uh, ako po si Helen. Uh, kami po yung magkasama ni Carol doon sa aming paaralan, yung Lakas High School. Uh, ang tanong ni sister is ano yung edukasyon. Diba? So, para po sa amin na nagtuturo ng patutubong edukasyon, ang edukasyon para sa amin ay yung matuto yung bawat isa. So, hindi lang two-way yan po. Hindi yung guru lang yung nagsasalita at nagbibigay ng kaalaman, kundi pati po yung mga learners. So, uh, dahil tayo po lahat ay eh, magbibigay ng Panginoon na may kaalaman. So, ibig sabihin, bawat isa sa atin ay natututo. So, ang question ay uh, pagbibigay o pagbabahagi na ng kaalaman ng bawat isa. Mag-aral ba o guru? Yun po sa atin. Okay, salamat po. Um, I think yung ano po yung cultures and tradition of the IPs, um, baka pwede siyang i-integrate or i-include dun sa iPad. Kasi di ba parang sa iPad niya na parang um, sa ethnic communities or sa schools na may maraming ethnic um, groups lang tinuturo yung mga um, IPs, yung IP traditions and cultures. Baka nga pwedeng, um, ang alam ko naman sa mga history subjects or ibang subjects ng mga mainstream schools, nadi-discuss naman yung mga cultures and traditions. Yung nga lang parang pakabiyaw lang. So baka lang pwedeng i mas maging comprehensive para lang maintindihan din ng mga nasa non-IP. Yung mga non-IPs, eh, maintindihan nila yung cultures and traditions ng selected IPs. Tapos isa rin yung maganda po, um, development is yung, yun nga nabang ko kanina, Integrated History Act of 2016. Um, hindi ito IT, pero yung Muslim, um, parang gusto rin isama na dun sa mga history classes ng primary and secondary education, yung cultures and traditions ng Muslims. So not only IPs, but also Muslims, so yung mga religions. Kasi minsan parang mas nakafocus yung mga mainstream schools sa Christianity, um, in particular yung yung mga Catholicisms. Yun. Lalo na sa mga nan um, Muslim areas. Okay. Uh, Miss uh, Cinco? Uh, 
yung sa tabi ni sister, no, yun nga, yung, yung dun papasok sister, yung dapat din nga, mas more on research. Nabanggit naman kanina din na medyo mali, ano, konti pa yung research talaga dun sa IBED initiative. And in fact, halos 2016 lang nagmaterialize yung IBED, pero anong ba, kailan pa ba naging batas siya? 2001, I think, no? Independent Court, no, nag nagbatas, department order pa lang, so wala pa. Tapos, may isa lang akong gusto din i-push as a, ano, no, a advocacy din sa education. Meron kasi point ng inclusion to with the learners. Uh, ayaw, na ano kasi sila Karen na i-raise. Ang tanong ko ganito, na medyo na isang napag Inclusion of the learners sa iPad. How about inclusion ng teachers? Kasi ganito po yan. May nabanggit si Carol na dalawang uh, IKSP, no? Facilitators. Ang lahat po niyan ay uh, libre. Wala silang plantilya, wala. Pero ibig sabihin, meron sanang recognition din for them. Kasi sabi nga niya kanina nang na-input ko sa kanya, not only accessibility ang habol natin sa inclusivity ng iPad, kundi dapat quality inclusive education. So doon kasi papasok yon na yung mismong IP, sila yung nag -e educate sa community nila at dapat nararecognize yun. Sa, ka ka uh, sa kaso po kasi ng halimbawa lakas, kasi gusto rin namin i-document yung experience nila. May mga, bo may mga graduate po dyan ng education na mismo ayta pero hindi po sila sumisweldo sa DepEd kasi hindi pa let passer. Pero sila talagang nagpursigi sila maging let passer sila. Pero with that, wala ding esensya. Ano ba yung klase of inclusivity din dito sa mga ganitong tao na nagbibigay ng effort para talagang maisulong yung IP education. So, I'm talking about yung non-recognized pa ng DepEd, pero nagsisilpi po doon sa community and the uh, facilitator. Thank you po, Ms. May. May gusto po ba kayo itagdag, Ms. Ellen? Ah, kalimutan mo na. Balikan natin later. Okay, so, uh, another question from the participants, please. Okay, ma'am, yes po. Meron pong yung Angi School Mabangka, yung AMD. Isa po siyang local boat school by Cartwheel Foundation na na-launch na 2014. Um, nira, um, parang nag-operate siya bisang donations po eh, from various organizations and individuals. Um, para po uh, to educate by Chow Children in Sambanga on basic literacy and numeras, numeracy skills as well as their culture, culture traditions and religion using mother tongue as region for instruction. So, yun po yung isa sa mga alam kong efforts. Uh, thank you, Ms. Ellen. Uh, 
thank you. That's good news to me. But all I'm supporting in Tabitawi itself because this is a Bajau area. This is where they really live. And I said they are. Uh, from there, they are uh, very industrious people. The children, in fact, they uh, they are very simple in their ways. They make mats, you know, uh, baniks made of very fine pandan that they produce. That even the children are doing it. The thing is, and I went to the school. Other teachers were not Bajaus. They think this and all the people of their own, you know. And I really want to see that there will be teachers who are Bajaus who themselves are there in their schools. Thank, Thank you. you for that question. Someone from them, I would like to. Oh, okay. <coughs> Hindi po ako tagal ah, okay. eh. Magandang hapon. But I'm Sharon Lumpias. I work with for the Australian Embassy. Okay. So the Australian Embassy um, in the Philippines um, supports uh, several programs of DepEd, uh, both national at uh, uh, local level. So yung tanong po ni Ma'am kung meron bang mga practices sorry, na, na of, of uh, providing education sa mga tao sa Tawi-Tawi, um, Brack, uh, who was our partner several, for several years, has implemented ADM sa areas na ito, in, in all the, of the areas in Mindanao. Um, and the features of this particular um, uh, modality is that they use K-12 um, curriculum, but it's um, contextualized according to the culture of the, the um, learners. So, may boat school dyan, tama? May boat school, uh, may mga um, um, schools or learning centers that's tailored fit to mga taga-upi, yung mga uh, other uh, indigenous people. But the, uh, and also, ang feature nito is that um, we, we, were, we used, or BRAC used, non-licensed teachers. So, these are learning facilitators who are in the community kasi uh, we tried during the transition to hire um, licensed teachers, but because of the distance of these areas, these are siguro mga eight kilometers ang layo, sobrang layo. Walang may gusto. Even if we recruit, we recruit, we tried recruiting, walang pupum pumupunta. So they, they are, um, uh, the, the um, schools are facilitated by um, learning facilitators are from the community. And uh, these learning facili uh, facilities, are managed by uh, CSOs. So CSOs not necessary private schools. So kapartner ng CSOs ang DepEd to be able to implement this in far areas. year, yes. Um, we did a longitudinal study for this, um, which uh, indicated that for K-3, to okay ang um, non-licensed teachers. Kaya lang may caveat, your non-licensed teachers needs to be trained. So ang, ang ginagawa ng BRAC was that they train the facilitators on a monthly basis. So parang yung lesson next month will be uh, 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 train nila this month parang gayon. So uh, uh, meron kami longitudinal study that says it's uh, uh, um, as effective as the um, what, what you know. Um, what 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 uh, the 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 learners from public schools are getting? Um, so you uh, so sinabi ni mama. So ano pa ba? Okay, so we have from uh, in Tawi Tawi. So ako lang gusto ko lang didi emphasize na one of, I guess one of the many reasons for OSYC in Mindanao in Barn is that yun nga walang may gusto ng teachers na magpupunta sa parang areas. And the current situation in Barm is that they have 790 barang underserved barangays. There's 210 barangays without school. So imagine the contribution ng out of school youth doon sa 200 na barangays na yun. And these barangays are, well, covered ng Sulu Basilan Tawi Tawi, but mostly is it Lanao, Maguindanao, and the islands. Yun. So thank you so much for sharing us that information. Would you like to add something? Good afternoon, Red Spoiling from Black Philippines. Just to supplement what Ma'am Sharon said, no? yes, we have uh, schools in Tawi-Tawi, 
and uh, boat school siya, and we tried to contextualize the delivery as much as we could. Our um, curriculum and medium of instruction is still formal, pero we adjust to uh, context and communities. That's why ito naman pa yung comment. Um, during the presentation, syempre nag, ano, present po kanina ng possible reasons kung bakit pababa yung uh, I mean, mataas yung education inequality, especially sa mga IP groups in uh, na sa mga laut, sa mga bajaw and bajaw. And yes, there's poverty. Konting konti lang social services dun. Yes, may migration kasi karamihan sa mga bajaw learners, they have to migrate to Saba, for example, or go to other neighboring islands to support their parents in their livelihood. But I think there's also something to consider, and that is uh, the cultural disparity even among IP groups. Kasi kahit yung mga bajaw groups mo namin, uh, um, nag-conduct po kami ng research last year, and tinignan po namin, yes, mayroon kaming bajaw groups, pero nagpapansin po namin na pa-decline na pa-decline yung numbers nila, and we figured out na isa sa reason kung bakit mo mababa yung number ay because of bullying. Kasi kahit yung mga bajaw ay discriminated inside their classrooms. And so again, I would like to invite our networks here, our partners, those who are attending here, especially mga policy researchers, to come to our communities and learn with our uh, partners, learn with our community, so that we could finally, fully root out kung ano nga ba talagang rason kung bakit mataas yung uh, education inequality sa communities natin, and so that together we can provide solutions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Since we are pressed for time, isang question na lang po ang pwede natin tanggapin sa oras na ito. Yes, ma'am. Yung office po namin gustong mag-conduct ng research sa mga IPs. And this is in connection with our engagement with one of the commissioners at CHED na uh, sinabi niya na I think there was a CMO, CHED Memorandum Order, na isama yung IP education no, sa kurikulo ng mga SOOCs. Now, gusto namin ngayong tingnan ano na ang status nito, mag-conduct ng baseline study, ganyan. Tapos, alamin talaga kung merong capacity yung mga teachers to really teach IP, uh, IP education. Meron na kaming um, parang hesitance kasi yung researchers namin nag-feedback na. And this one, I'd like to find out kung tama. We have to go through NCIP. Okay? Now, ang feedback nila, it's so difficult na stifle yung mga researchers namin to do the research because mahirap kumuha ng clearance from NCIP. No? Una, babayaran mo sila, sasamahan mo sila, sasama sila sa wherever you do the research. So, hindi ganun ka-encouraging itong aspect na to. So, right now, we're still in the process of finding out whether this is true. Sana meron tabi NCIP dito para malaman kung Ganun nga ba, no? we have to go through it and that it's really tedious and difficult to do research among IPs because of this. Okay, may taga NCIP po ba dito? Since wala po, baka gusto mag-share ni Ms. Helen. Uh, gusto ko lang pong i-share yung isang experience nga po nung naging professor na sa masteran na gusto po niya mag-research sa IT. Then pumunta po siya sa office ng NCIT at yun nga po, totoo yung sinasabi na humingi sila ng bayad. Sabi namin, kasi sa experience po namin, yung mga NGO partner at saka yung mga ang namin, dumidiret siya po talaga sa aming community. So wala po silang binabayaran. Basta po ang amin lang ay may mowa kami na yung lahat ng information na makukuha nila sa amin, diba balik nila sa amin? Ganun po yun. Uh, so, may mga kasunduan po. At nililinaw din po namin sa kanila yung mga gusto mag-research sa amin. Marami na po kasi pumupunta na ano ba yung objective ninyo. Kasi sa amin, may experience po kami na uh, minsan may nangyari po na parang ginamit lang, then pinapirahan lang. So, yun po ayaw namin mangyari. Kaya sa bawat nagre-research po sa amin, pumupunta sa amin community, talaga pong kami ay gumagawa ng kasunduan. So yun po, ay dadagdag po siguro si Carol. Ang alam ko po kasi talaga pag nagre-research po, kaya may gusto po kayo sa amin sa mga sa mga IP communities. Sa April na po kasi meron kami meron tayong tinatawag na FPIC Free Prior Informed Consent. Pero yun po ay kukunin niyo doon mismo sa pamayanan, hindi naman po doon sa NCAP. Opo. Oh, 
Magpunta na po kayo sa... So we can go directly. <laughs> yes. Can you use the mic? Uh, ang pagkaunawa po kasi namin, community po naman po talaga ang dapat mag-decide kung tatanggapin o hindi yung mag mga mag-research at hindi po yung CIP. So, ibig sabihin, uh, yun, uh, siguro dahil sila yung opisina na nag-lating po sa community, hindi sila dapat yan. <laughs> okay, makakarating po. <laughs> anyway, uh, baka gusto mo pala ng SCP sa NCIP. <laughs> Basta maliwanag po yung, ano nga, yung objective ng research na hindi gagamitin sa sarili lang na. Uh, yes, ma'am. Good afternoon po. Sishare po lang po regarding the NCIP. Um, usually po, kapag may ethics approval na kailangan for the research, it is the Ethical Review Board who requires the NCIP and not the community. So if the research needs to have that ethical approval, yung ethics review board ang naghahanap ng NCIP. So that for you to get the ethical approval to conduct that research, so you have to go through NCIP. Now, kung hindi naman kailangan ng ethics approval, which is usually the norm na kailangan, yun po, didiretsyo po sa community. FYI lang po. Okay, so no tech po ma'am. Anyway, so any more from the audience? Mga insights nyo, mga suggestions, mga hinaing? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Pagkatang habag po. I'm Camille po from Commission on Population and Development. Uh, yung question ko po, um, in relation naman siya sa personal experience ko, kasi nung college po, nag-study din kami, kung kami ng research, about sa uh, education ng kasiguran at ta sa Aurora. Um, sila po, ang naging experience ko with them, medyo um, resistant sila towards education. Although, mayroong mga um, groups, families na uh, into education, parang hanggang high school na. So I want to ask po, especially Ms. Carol, kasi parang uh, naging successful po yung advocacy nyo on education. Kung paano po yung naging approach nyo sa mga uh, sa mga magulang po nung mga estudyante, dun po sa mga leaders, kung paano nyo po sila in-approach. Kasi yung ibang IPs po, uh, parang resistant po talaga sila sa idea since nga takot sila na baka maapektuhan yung kultura nila. And then second po, since ang um, inclusive education po, uh, technically po, pinupush forward po natin to because we want uh, the children, the youth, to have uh, better ca uh, careers in the future. Since po yung sa um, IP education, ang pinupush naman natin is, ang curriculum is um, based pa din sa culture nila. Um, do we open the idea sa mga sujante na to na pwede sila na maging engineers or like, kasi pag uh, IP and culture, mostly ang ituturo, ang ituturo natin is yun nga kung paano mangisda, kung paano magtanim. And right now, yung um, ganong klase po na, yung ganun po na hanap buhay, hindi po siya, I believe, personally, sustainable sa ngayon. Mahirap po yung buhay ng mga magsasaka, ng mga mangingisda. So parang nagiging limited din po yung chances nila na magkaroon ng mas magandang buhay. And then, um, honestly speaking po, mas magiging maayos po yung pamumuhay nila, yung kita nila sa pamilya kung meron silang mas magandang trabaho. I-na-open po pa natin sa kanila yung idea na yun. Para meron pa silang career orientation, na pwede silang maging uh, accountant, yung mga ganun po, para mas maging maunlad po yung pamumuhay nila. Yun lang po sila. Thank you. Miss Carol? Ayan po. Um, ang aming po pamayanan, lakas, ay uh, na-organisa po kasi noon pa ng mga FM sisters na nabanggit ko po kanina. So, ibig sabihin po, yung aming pong samahan, ano po, since na-organize siya, yung aming mga leaders ay bukas po sa ganyang ka kaisipan. Yun nga, ma mapalad ang aming samahan kasi, ano eh, uh, open yung mga, ma yung mga magulang namin, open na magpaaral. Yun nga po, sila pa nga po yun, yun nag-push na magkaroon talaga kami ng sarili namin paaralan na matagal na talagang pangarap bago pa pumutong at tinatubo. So yun lang po, mapalad kami yung aming organization kasi open yung aming mga leaders and elders. Kaya lang, sa yun nga po, sa ibang mga, sa ibang mga, sa ibang mga ITA, sa ibang mga ITs, pag walang organization siguro silang 
sinasandal na yun lang po, baka mah mahirap talaga na, 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 na mag-open sila sa mga ganong kaisipan. Tapos po yung sinasabi niya na ano na, hindi lang pagsasaka, hindi lang pagtatanim, pahingisda ang ano. Opo, ino-open po namin sa kanila na yung iba pang mga kurso. Hindi po namin sila binabawalan. Actually, hindi na nga po namin kailangan pag-aralan po yung pagsasaka. Pagsasaka kasi alam naman na po talaga namin. Ano po, ino-open po namin. Hindi po namin sila nililimitahan kung ano ang gusto nilang kunin na kurso. Kung ano yung gusto nilang kunin na, ano, na pag-aralan. So for uh, the last comment po, so, Miss Helen. Okay, dagdagan ko lang po. Yung pagtanggap po ng mga parents na sa mga pang-processo rin po, tulad po sa amin nga. So bago kami po tumating sa punto na gusto pala ng mga ano na mag-aral, marami po kami na pagdaanan ng problema na katulad niyo na ayaw talaga mamaaral noon, magpaaral kasi nga doon sa mga diskriminasyon, yung nangyari, uh, yung kwento kanina na nakapag-aral pero hindi naman niya ginamit sa kanyang kapwa katutubo, kundi sa kanyang sa pagluloko pa. So, mahabang proseso po yan. At uh, sana po, yung sinasabi lang namin, na mahalaga po ang may organisasyon. So, kahit ano po sektor, napakahalaga po yan para mabigyan ng uh, maantaw doon, para maging maayos at patatag po uh, yung mga gusto natin magawa sa tulong po ng sama-samang pag- uh, Tataguyod. Very short lang na naman. Yung sa iPad naman, yung binabanggit natin dito, kaya din may iPad, kaya nga indigenous people's education. Yung gusto yung layo nito, even sa DepEd order, right-based approach nga yun eh, karapatan. Karapatan na magkaroon ng edukasyon, yung mga katutubo. So it's a right-based. Pangalawa, kaya sila nag-iPad, the way I understand it sa pag-community, ay dahil huwag mawala yung identity nila bilang Aita, bilang Batyaw. Pero in terms of paano yung development, hindi yung pinipigilan. Gusto nga nila yung in fact, meron silang nag-lawyer, kumuha ng, ano, ng lawyer, kumuha ng nurse, kumuha ng ano, yun yung ganun. Pero ibig sabihin, yan, kurso mo lang yan eh. Paano mo yan ibabalik sa community, yung kurso mo na yan, para mamintin na mo yung identity ng community mo bilang IP community. So, yun lang po. Huwag tayo magkaroon ng, ito, ano na, ay, pipigilan natin, backward yan, ganito na, hindi po yan. Okay? So, yun po. Yung buong sustainable community ng IP po yung ano nila. At saka yung pangangalaga doon sa ancestral domain. Thank you. So, marami pong salamat. So, ayun po. So, that's all for session 3. We would like to thank uh, the speakers for their insights as well as to the active participation of uh, our um, guests here. So, palagpakan na naman po natin sila. Okay. So, uh, now to give us a summary of uh, the highlights of today's discussion, may we call on again on stage Dr. Uh, Sheila Shar for the synthesis. Uh, good afternoon po once again. So I am substituting for uh, uh, Professor Magbata who cannot be with us today. So I will not deliver the important points uh, discussed in uh, all the sessions, but uh, let me just give a few takeaways that we can keep for our discussions this morning and, and this afternoon. And the first thing that I would like to emphasize is um, the need for us to use a systems approach no? when um, in impacting our development challenges, including the education issues that we um, discussed today. No? So we need to um, tackle issues in a holistic way, look at how education issues intersect with peace and security, with um, livelihood, no? with access to, to uh, health services, um, with poverty in general, and even with um, problems in infrastructure. Okay? So, and in that regard, no? it is important uh, to emphasize synergy of our development initiatives, the close collaboration of our government agencies. No? 
So they, they should be talking to each other. So hindi yung kanya-kanya, no? In, in order for us to have that integrated approach when uh, uh, in, in uh, tackling uh, these issues. No? So synergy, close coordination, and we should do away with one-size-fits-all solution. No? And having said that, we need to have a nuanced understanding of uh, these issues. And, and in order for us to have a nuanced understanding, we need to have more in disaggregated this this data. It is not enough that we have general statistics on ilan yung ating PWDs o ilan yung ating indigenous peoples. No? Because we shouldn't treat these groups um, as a homo homogeneous group. We should not treat um, indigenous peoples na homogeneous group na iisa yung characteristics niya. Or in PWDs as a homogeneous group na may similar characteristics. And magagawa natin ito kung meron tayong disaggregated data by uh, location, by region, by province, and even by municipality kung pwede, uh, by gender, okay, uh, by ethnicity, okay, um, by disability. No? Um, we need disaggregated the data in order for us to come up with uh, more effective interventions. And this is where uh, the importance of research comes in. The importance of uh, research partners like the IDS and other research institutions. And I would also like to highlight the importance of HEIs, of higher education institutions, the importance of academe, particularly local HEIs local higher education institutions kasi sila yung may access sa local data. So, for example, yung um, sabi natin, kulang tayo ng, ng mga pag-aaral, kulang tayo ng dato sa, sa barn, no? So, ang um, andami ng magagandang iskwelahan na pwede natin itap sa barn, na pwede mag-conduct uh, mag, mag, uh, ng marami pong pag-aaral tungkol dito. Maraming pag-aaral tungkol sa mga indigenous peoples, pag-aaral pa tungkol sa mga PWDs doon, even yung sa mga out-of-school children and youth doon. And in other areas as well. Okay? So, yun nga, um, how to tap into this, into the capacities of our age guys and research institutes sa, sa local level. Okay? The third one which I would like to emphasize is um, when we talk about education, and this is something na na, na, na notice ko, sa forum na ito, ano, we are merely touching the surface because para ang naging focus natin is more on the access. Okay? That's very important, of course, but yung quality rin, quality of education, no? And this is one thing kanina na uh, in-emphasize ni B.P. Ballesteros of PIPS, no? based on recent, uh, our recent scores at PISA, no? Nakita naman very clearly na napapag-iwanan na tayo. And all those things fall down to yung, yung, yung quality of education uh, natin dito sa atin. No? And we live now in the age of the fourth industrial revolution na mas marami tayong challenges. Ano? The fourth industrial revolution is geared towards automation. Okay? And this is an age where um, we should not be we should not just be imparting cognitive, cognitive skills, not focusing on cognitive skills, but also soft skills. That was emphasized before by Dr. Um, Albert. So we need to ensure that we are not just addressing the, the access issue, but also the quality issue. Okay? And this is where, hindi um, lang sa curriculum, no? But also, yung, are we capacity, capacitating our teachers enough? No? Uh, nakakapasitig ba natin? Nag-train ba natin sila? At tama ba yung training na naiibigay uh, natin sa kanila? No? Uh, there was one um, for um, big conference of EIDS conducted uh, last year. No? And this is about the fourth industrial revolution. Let me just uh, share with you uh, yung, yung isa sa mga presentations to it this this was uh, by the Bernitos na bangit na ni Tito Stanina 
because they, they have this very innovative approach of teaching uh, students, uh, teaching them about you know math and, and science. Very innovative talaga. At isa sa mga sinabi nila is, okay, kasi kailangan i-adapt ng mga guru natin kung paano yung tamang pagtuturo, mga makabago paraan ng pagtuturo ng math and science para maingan nyo din yung ating mga estudyante na to take um, science and engineering courses kasi kung, kung nasa pagtuturo, pagtuturo naman yan eh, kung nasa uh, creativity ng teacher. Kung yung teacher ay uh, magaling magturo, hindi maiingan din yung mga estudyante na matuto ng math and science para later on, meron din silang parang interes, meron silang motivation na, ah, hindi naman pala mahirap ito mga kuso ito. Because these are the courses that we need in this day and age that we are we are now, na, 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 nandito na tayo sa fourth, uh, fourth industrial revolution. Okay. Another thing is um, yung, yung um, importance ng government, academe, civil society collaboration. No? I, we have also to underscore that. And um, yung sa academe, nasabi ko na, yung tapi to the capacities of our um, uh, academic institutions for research, but also not, not just for research, but, but for um, yung, yung mga projects, yung mga programs that ano, can help our vulnerable groups. Okay? But yung sa government, Pa paano natin mas lalong matat ma ma matatap yung ating mga local government, government units down to the barangay level. Kanina may mga mga good practices that were mentioned. No? So how can we propagate those good practices? How can we disseminate those good practices so that we can learn from them? Maganda makita kung ano yung Paano nila nagawa ito? Because kung nagawa ito ng mga LGUs na ito, siguro, hindi naman mahirap given the proper support, support also of the national government, of the local government, to also implement those good practices. I don't want to use best practices kasi baka mas yung good, baka yung best may mas best pa rin. So let's just say good practices. Okay. Um, even sa barangay level, ano, magandang makita kung papaano sa barangay level pa lang, um, ano yung pwede nilang magawa, ano yung pwede nilang maipagdo. Um, another thing is um, stronger monitoring and evaluation of our policies, especially as they apply to the grassroots. Kanina na some of our uh, uh, speakers mentioned that. No? Kasi, I admit, obviously naman, May, marami na rin tayo mga policies in place. But yung sa implementation, mukhang doon tayo nagkakaroon na doon maraming gaps. So, uh, magandang ano, mapag, mapag, ano, ma, malaman through continuous uh, monitoring, through regular monitor, monitoring. At sana dapat embedded lagi yung evaluation. Because it is through evaluation that we can determine whether these programs, these policies are working or not. Or if they are uh, maybe not um, working very well, baka may kailangan lang i-fine tune, no? Hindi naman kailangan i-scrub talaga. Okay. So, ang isa pa is yung ano-ano, yung um, need for continuous um, information and education in order to uh, to change our cultural mindset, also to uh, change or, or to modify behavior. Kanina, nasabi yung, yung prevailing pa rin yung ano, yung uh, bullying, yung dis uh, social bullying, or yeah, discrimination against uh, IPs, and even discrimination against uh, uh, persons with disabilities. And even sa family, minsan yung yung parang behavior hindi pa yung dapat tamang behavior ang ibinibigay ng parent ano uh, for some reasons kasi baka hindi din naman nila 
masyado na iibigihan yung yung ano, yung uh, kung ano yung meron yung anak nila o kaya yung mga talagang pangangailangan nila. So in this regard, um, magandang tingnan ano yung mga current uh, pro programs natin. Na Nabangitian kanina yung ating um, modified conditional cash transfer program. Diba? We have already the MCCP and this caters to families who are in need of social protection and they include families na, uh, with uh, families with PWD and kasi with the MCCP no, apart from the cash grant or the cash subsidy and apart from the family development sessions, nagpo-provide din sila ng mga psychosocial uh, interventions. So maganda rin matingnan kung talaga bang nag-work ito, ma-evaluate properly, no? Kung talaga bang mga, uh, nakakatulong ito, as yung kaano pa yung uh, ano yung kailangan i-function sa mga programs. the surface but um, it is important that uh, we have uh, more spaces like this where we can discuss not, not just discuss the issues but also discuss the recommendations at para maipaagot maipa, maipa natin yung mga yun sa ating mga uh, policy makers we need to continue pushing for reforms no? Um, kanina si Si Ma'am from si si attorney from the office of uh, Congress, Congressman Romel has told us about uh, very good news about the AL, ALS bill and other um, initiatives in uh, in Congress. So let us continue for, uh, pushing for policy reforms. Um, we have had you know some very good news lately the enactment of the four piece into a law, which is a very important step. Uh, towards pover poverty redu reduction, even the um, enactment of the CBMS law, you know, the community-based monitoring system, which will uh, facilitate in um, in in the uh, gathering of more uh, localized data. So these are um, are uh, very positive developments, and um, of course, these are not enough, and. It is our duty, no? those of us who are in the research community, those of us who are in the academic community, in, in government, in the civil society, as well as in the um, private sector, to continue pushing for reform so that um, that goal of having inclusive education will not just be a need, but will be a reality. So, yun lang po, maraming salamat. Thank you so much uh, for providing us the highlights of today's forum, Ms. Sheila. On this note, may we call on Mr. Benjamin Delphine, SEP's Director for Program Implementation, for his closing remarks. Fellow advocates of uh, inclusive education, magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Today, we heard about children's exclusion from and within education. This range from challenges in access, participation, and learning outcomes. From the experiences of children and youth with disabilities, those who are out of school, and learners who are members of indigenous communities, the cross-cutting battle cry is the need for Pool of government and pool of society approach to advance inclusive quality education for marginalized children and youth. The whole of government approach means that policies and programs across all sectors contribute systematically to improve the state of education. Intersectoral government structure with political and financial support can facilitate coordination, identify common goals, monitor joint actions, 
and build effective collaboration. While the whole of society pertains to all of us here in this room, it also includes government, civil society, academic institution, and private sector, and families to move the needle in inclusive, equ equitable quality education and lifelong learning. May the presentations, reaction, and even questions posed today make us think, question, cooperate, and collaborate. Do children have access to learning opportunities? Are they learning? More importantly, what are we going to do about it? We commend the Philippine Institute of for Development Studies for the leadership on evidence generation and for creating an enabling environment for a meaningful discussion. Before we officially end our forum today, this year we celebrate the 30th anniversary of the United Nation, Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. We also honor the legacy of Save the Children's founder, Eglantine Jeb, who first drafted a document that eventually became the Declaration of the Rights of the Child one of the main inspiration behind the UNCRC. As we end the day, I'd like to leave a word also from our founder that humanity owes the child the best it has to give. So, magandang hapon po ulit sa inyong lahat. Congratulations to everyone. Thank you so much, Mr. Delphine. So that concludes our event for today. Again, on behalf of Save the Children Philippines and the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, we would like to thank you for joining us in this uh, forum. But before you leave, may we remind you to please fill out the survey form given to you earlier and leave them at the uh, secretariat.